big question. Why is Electronic Arts looking at a rough fourth quarter? And maybe why isn't it so bad? We've got Ian Scher of Dow Jones Newswires joining us now from Washington, uh, from, from San Francisco. There he is. Hi. Ian, um, Electronic Arts, um, look, um, we've, uh, we have got, um, I'm going to say, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused with the cameras here. Star Wars, The Old Republic, that was a game that Electronic Arts was staying, you know, putting a lot of emphasis on, and it did okay, but not enough for a soft quarter, right? Well, so what happened is that um, their Q3 actually met and beat, and they did pretty well, and uh, Q4 was looking a little kind of um, questionable, you know, investors were a little worried about it. Um, but what happened was that they, uh, they sold a lot of Star Wars uh, The Old Republic, which is this new massively multiplayer online game um, to compete against Activision's Blizzard's uh, World of Warcraft. They sold a lot of it in the last month or so. Uh, 1.7 million people are playing it so far, they say, and they've sold 2 million units, which is really pretty good. Um, they'd initially said that 500,000 people would make it a good investment and, uh, or rather 500,000 people would make it profitable and, and a million people would make it a good investment. So, so far they're doing pretty well. Um, but the, you know, the big thing was that the, the Q4 was a little bit impacted by stuff going on in Europe and a couple of other things. They sped up the launch of Star Wars so they won't get as much of a bump in this quarter and stuff like that. But overall, what it's really showing is that they've really done well with their digital business. They've been trying to transform their business model. They're trying to sell a lot more games online. They're trying to sell a lot more games through the App Store on Apple's products. And this now, this Star Wars seems to be another leg of their business that's uh, starting to grow. So it's all looking pretty good. It's all looking pretty good, but the outlook is falling short of hopes. What's going on yeah. now? Well, like I said, Europe is uh, partially involved. There's a, uh, there's a European retailer that they didn't name on the call who uh, is having a little bit of trouble. And it may uh, cause there to be a lot more kind of product in the channel, if you will. So, you know, there's a lot of leftover un box units and whatnot. And um, so they said that that could be impacting quite a bit, as well as, like I said, speeding up the release of Star Wars. So they won't get as much of a bump in this quarter. Um, and a couple of other things that one of their social games kind of slipped. Um, but they said overall that, you know, that things are humming along. It was just that, it was a little, that the expectations were a little under what investors were expecting. But once the interesting thing is that the shares were trending down yesterday after they announced their earnings and after they gave that Q4 outlook. But once they gave us that kind of explanation, you saw the shares literally go from down 4% to up 6%. So it's kind of one of those things of they just kind of, once everyone understood what was going on, they felt a lot better. It's amazing the power of a few words. Well, we actually do have Peter Kafka now on the set. Hey, Thank sir. you very oh, much yeah. for making it. And, and you, you can go when the end of the show has, has arrived. Time to shave. Um, we, we love you whether you're shaved or not. Um, so this is interesting, the move to digital. Um, with, within within EA um, and digital sales, it seems pretty pretty pronounced. That's the, that's the quote from me. Yeah, this is story. something that the industry has seen coming for a long time. I think tried to hold off for the same reason that most media businesses try to hold off sort of the next wave of innovation. Uh, but uh, it's inevitable, right? It's well, it's inevitable. But I mean, it, it's nice that they seem to be embracing it. Uh, it, it's, it's, we'll see if it's nice for customers, right? They still got to, they've still got to say this is how we want to consume our goods. Okay. What, what do you think, Ian? Um, are customers likely to embrace this? Well, so far, at least for EA, it seems to be that way. Um, one of the other trends that's really going well for them is this idea of selling additional goods inside of games. So a console game like you know, uh, we've got a Call of Duty, or actually that's not there, it's this Battlefield, sorry. Um, that, uh, that, you know, it, they can buy extra maps, they can buy extra levels, and that's helping these games that traditionally only sell for 60 bucks a pop, now they're making even more money, you know, 15, 30 bucks uh, more by selling these extra maps and whatnot over the course of the lifetime of the game. So it's actually doing really well in terms of helping them get more out of the traditional gaming business as well as you know when they're growing their stuff like on the Apple iPad and iPhone.